Coastal Cooperation stages a letter writing competition as part of activities in observance of World Post Day, which is celebrated on October 9. The competition is open to students 15 years and under and provides an opportunity for them to express themselves on topical issues that affect the nation and region. It is funded by the Universal Postal Union and the Grenada Postal Corporation in partnership with the Ministry of Education. Chairman of the Board of Directors at the GPC, Adrian Francis, believes the event will not just give students a chance to showcase their creativity, but to develop their writing skills. Right now in this technological age, you have our iPod, iPhone, everything is the first post now. Mm -hmm. No, we want to create everybody, we want to have a we. So the fact is that when you have to write, you never, you never said, they never tell you, text your SB up to, to, to the thing, or text the paper you're doing there. And they can't do it. Yeah? You must have to write. Okay? And as they say in writing, an expression, you express yourself in way. And that is why today, at least at last year, we partnered with the Ministry of Education in the, in the letter writing competition, sponsored by UPU, and in, in conjunction with the Greater Coastal Corporation. And this is our second year doing that. Because the response we got the last year was tremendous. And what was, and what, what, what was more I mean, striking to us that the school is in Andrews. Not a school, not SJC, not PBC, not GBSL, but a school outside SAS. Cop the, two, the, the top three prizes with St. Joseph Kwame sharing the third prize with them. And what a, what a comment. Education official Dennis Braffitt says the theme is relevant to what's happening in the region with deforestation and every child can relate. Ms. Braffitt expects maximum participation in the event. This topic is appropriate for any age group. I yes. love the topic this year. Yes. Yeah. It's appropriate and the children can relate to it. Every child can relate. Even the preschoolers could have taken part <laughs> because they will do what we call dry tin, yes. where they will draw and they will write. Right. And they will write a whole essay, they will write a whole letter. We can't understand what they write, but they can read it for us. So the topic is very relevant to the Caribbean, it's very very relevant to Grenada, and we can get a lot out of this topic. So I can see many, many schools taking part. We have approximately 58 government and government-assisted primary schools, and we have some 12 or so private primary schools, and then we have 19 government secondary schools plus we have a few private secondary schools. So if we look at it, we might have approximately, um, let's say 80 in that vicinity, schools taking part, if every school was to take part, and if every school just sent up one entry, we already have 80 persons, but I believe that it would be sending up you know, a lot of entries, we're going to get into the double figures. During the launch, the students who placed first, the second, and the third in the poetry competition held earlier this year were presented with their prizes. Zena Welch from St. Mark's Secondary School placed first, St. Patrick's Anglican School Andal Williams came in second, and Antonia Bartholomew from St. Dominic RC third. Zena shared her winning poem at the ceremony. Okay, two more to go. House number 80, then 81. Wow, isn't it amazing just thinking of my life as a post woman? A post woman I never thought I would be. But here I was, final delivery, on the, my first day to the great Mr. Gary. I'm sure at first, is this the right house? Yes, yes. Then roof, roof. Big dog boy. I almost jumped out of my blouse. By the time I was done, Tired and wearing a great big frown. Seems so long, like if it took from dust to dawn. But Granny Celia told me, patience, my dear, because the world of work is tough, so you have to bear. And surely, soon enough, I became more physically fit. I knew all the roads, alleys, and shortcuts, which was my specialty. The cities and towns I now knew at the palm of my hand, challenging yet rewarding as others came to depend on me for the directions of the land. Many friendships found with both old and young, but whether it was rain or sunshine, from them life lessons were learned. In my little corner, I worked well and did my good deed. Being part of such important network, delivering my packages and sowing the seed. For others to follow, we're trained, 
planes, computers, and even coal pots can be reached, <laughs> like Santa Claus, to fulfill even the smallest but most important expectation for both poor and rich. Turning to regional developments, regional coordination of humanitarian assistance will soon be a reality with Thursday's signing of the CARICOM and Government of Brazil Cooperation Program on Disaster Risk Reduction. It is intended to mitigate and respond to social man-made and natural disasters, as well as to assist with reconstruction efforts in CARICOM member states. The Government of Brazil will donate 562 1,600 U.S. dollars to the fund, which will be disbursed to SIDEMA through the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. As of this Sunday, 10th October, a new chapter of the Annals of Caribbean History will be written with the dissolution of the Dutch Caribbean Federation known as the Netherlands Antilles. 101010 will bring to, will bring to an end to 56 years of a constitutional arrangement between the Netherlands, Holland, and its Caribbean de dependencies except Aruba as a group. Aruba negotiated its own internal autonomy with Holland which took effect in 1986. That move was born out of a desire to remove itself from on the Curacao, the largest island and de facto capital of the now being disbanded Netherlands Antilles. That's going to do it for news. Sports is next to Dre Roberts. Stay with us. Here's a reminder of some programming items on a GIS TV. There will be a repeat of Thursday's Spice Morning at 7 p.m. The News Hour, which is available on YouTube and the government's website, will be rebroadcast at 9 p.m. to be followed at 10 by a conversation with author Kwame Joseph, who will be participating in this month's Spice World Literary Festival. The guests on Friday's Spice Morning with host Ray Roberts will include Billy Desrochers of First Caribbean International Bank, Alison George and Mike Curring of the Grenada Hash House Harriers, and Donna Gordon, Michael Williams, and Jefferson Ramirez, who will discuss a planned concert of the TA Marishow Community College Choir. Remember to tune into GIS TV for more informative and educational programs Sunday through Saturday. To recap the headlines making tonight's news, local insurance official confident that despite the CL financial crisis, other companies are holding their own. Significant progress recorded on reconstruction of a youth center. And in the region, CARICOM and Brazil signed cooperation program on disaster risk reduction. These plus other stories made it in tonight's news. On behalf of the entire news team here at the Government Information Service, I am Abigail McIntyre. Thank you for joining us.